Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro. I am technical lead for QPA with design at IQM. And today I'm honored to be here at APA Smart Meeting. And I, I will talk to you about superconducting quantum processor design using KQ circuits. What is needed usually to design a superconducting qubit processor are the following tools. We need the finite element method simulations, microwave netlist modeling if you want to let's say, check our circuit, Hamiltonian calculations, and finally, geometry building. What KQ circuit want to address is uh, this last aspect of the process. The problem we want to solve is to design superconducting structures, then having a shared platform for such chip design, and then cut costly human errors, and improve uh, the efficiency. When you have to scale up your quantum processor, it's very easy to make errors. And if you do it by end, you become uh, less efficient the more you grow inside. So the idea is to help uh, in these problems. The QPU design flow starts uh, from the Hamiltonian usually, where you define a set of frequencies, coupling strands, uh, that correspond to a physical circuit made of capacitor, inductors, and so on. This must be translated into a chip geometry, and this chip geometry is realized using KQ circuit. KQ circuit is baked by um, an element library, which is can be based on a, a finite element method simulation of small components. Then once the geometry is ready, it can be validated by either netlist or a full FEM simulation of the full chip. Um, once we have the chip that is done and working, we can export it to, to the mask and the mask layout can be defined in KQ circuit and finally can be handed over to fabrication in OASIS file, which is uh, natively generated from KQ circuit. KQ circuit, uh, is an open source design framework for superconducting quantum circuits. It is written in Python and it is uh, uh, licensed under GPL v3. It is a, a K layout extension, so you must have a K layout installed to be able to use this uh, uh, tool. And if you just want to try it out, I suggest you to use the package manager inside K layout and you will find this uh, salt package already available. So you don't need to do anything if not just clicking on it and pressing install. KQ circuit relies on few concepts. The first one is the P cell library. Basically, every element has a set of parameters which uh, parameterize the geometry. It can be quite complex. Then, we have a second key concept, which are the reference point. As you can see here in this capacitor, we have uh, the input and the output coordinates, and we can use this to actually uh, stitch together different elements in a very easy way by just knowing what is the name of this uh, reference point. We do have a standard for layers, so for example, a squid, or uh, an A bridge and so on. We have many layers already integrated into the layouts, but you can add more, you can remove, you can edit as you like. Finally, the last important concept is the face. So since uh, we are moving towards a 3D architecture, we do need to support multiple layers. And we do have, for example, the blue layer you see here is the bottom layer. The red layer you see is to the top layer. And this is for the case of a flip chip architecture where we have two substrate, one on the top of each other. What workflows does KQC support? Well, the first one is the easiest one, and it is the GUI. Uh, workflow. You can just uh, drag and drop the elements from the library you will find on the left column of KLayout. This allows you to visualize and maybe if you like even building a full chip out of it by just uh, dragging and placing components. Once you have dragged them, you can also easily modify them thanks to this uh, PCL uh, parameters library. So uh, the idea is that if you have parameterized a certain uh, dimension in your design, and then you can just open this window and choose uh, 
the parameters you want to modify and modify it accordingly, like the length of the resonator or the number of air bridges and things like this. And the geometry will modify accordingly. But also the code is supported. So if uh, you want to add new elements or new chips, you should use instead using a Python environment and then adding your own and building chips out of it. Finally, the code can also be used for macros. Uh, if you want to perform some uh, scripting operation, like uh, finding some elements in a chip or exporting some coordinate or some position of some elements, the scripting can be useful. The elements library that we integrate inside KQ Circuit is already quite vast. So basically with elements you will find at the first installation, you can already build a full working chip. We do have, for example, qubits, like here you can see at Rasmon, uh, squid, which is uh, the basic element making the qubit actually a qubit. Then we have a uh, complex waveguides, uh, for example, this resonator that can fit uh, uh, any polygon in space uh, for a certain length you like, but many other kind of waveguides. Then uh, we do have, uh, for example, coplanar capacitors, uh, which can be both gap capacitor and interdigital ones face-to-face -face connector in case you are using a flip chip architecture. Uh, alignment markers, uh, these are uh, always present on the chips. So you are also able to customize and make your own for fabrication purposes. The chip library is also very uh, extended. And uh, the reason to do so are mostly these two. Basically, we want to provide the user code uh, use examples. So it's uh, easier to start uh, learning uh, how to actually draw your first chip, but they can also be used as a fabrication test standard. It would be nice if uh, one day, for example, in the broad community of superconducting qubits, a researcher can exchange geometries and then uh, they can benchmark, uh, for example, a fabrication technique from one foundry to another lab and then uh, compare apples to apples. So it will, the goal would be really to have uh, a community driven development of this tool. Finally, we do support also the export for fabrication. So the chips that you have uh, drawn, they can be laid out in a mask set and uh, they can be tiled as you like uh, inside the mask. More important things is that once the mask uh, is uh, created, the chips uh, uh, netlist are also exported. So you can perform some circuit validation using other tools and see if your circuit is really doing what it should. Then uh, there are uh, probe points in case you are interested in doing automatic probing of your mask. There are automated simulation scripts, so you can actually code new geometries inside the KQ circuit and then uh, export them uh, for uh, automatic simulation in Sonnet, HFSS, and Q3D. And uh, you can program all the sweep you like uh, and so on. Performance-wise, KQ circuit is also very fast compared to standard tools. Building a mask takes uh, very little time, and the file size is incredibly small thanks to the OASIS format. Usually, when you deal with other tools like the standard GDS2 format, the mask size can be many hundreds of megabytes, and the performance in terms of time can be very slow, especially when you have a structure like this one on the right side, where you have a ground grid for flux spinning also, and then uh, TSV in dark green or indium bumps in the light green and also coplanar waveguide with flip chip connectors and so on. I would like to thank at the end everyone that has contributed at KQ Circuit and I hope in the future many more will contribute using our uh, GitHub page, maybe by leaving a feedback, uh, reporting issues or even contributing new geometries that are missing. Finally, I would like also to uh, advertise that we are actually hiring actively in Finland, Germany, Spain, and France. So if you are interested in joining us, please uh, uh, apply to the careers page. 
in, in the end, we are also organizing a superconducting quant qubits and algorithms conference this summer in Helsinki. So if you never visited Finland, you are welcome to join and it will be certainly a pleasure to meet you again. Thank you very much for listening.